Good morning and welcome to Sundays at Showmon. Every Sunday we walk through the more technical aspects of what you've seen through the week and go through the hows and whys of the construction methods that you've seen. So this week obviously has been a big week for insulation. It's the first ever insulation that's gone into Showmon. So I want to clarify a few things and talk about why we've chosen the insulation we've chosen, how we're insulating, and after that, how we're running the wires and plumbing around. So you may see from behind me, we've gone with a Rockwool product. Now Rockwool is completely fireproof. It's moisture resistant, so you can technically leave this stuff in a puddle of water and it will barely suck up any moisture. Also, it's breathable as well, and it's super dense. So, this one, all the floors are exactly the same depth, and the spacing's the same. So the depth is 200 millimeters, which is quite thick for a floor, but you know, it's a chateau, we want these floors to be robust. So that means, to get the maximum insulation, we need a 200 mil insulation. And because, like I spoke to you through the week, because we've spaced all these joists out and they're all new floors, it means that between all the joists is the same dimension. So we can cut the insulation the same and it can fit nice and snugly. Each cut isn't completely different. So that's helped massively with the install. So the R rating on this per floor will get about 6.3 R rating which is a huge R rating to have, especially in an old building like this, is really, really gonna keep the heat in one place. Now, above this, we're gonna have a vapor barrier on every floor. So that means when we heat the basement or we heat any other floor, that hot air, which is generated especially in the basement, which is gonna be a little more moist, it won't be able to permeate through the ceiling and attack the joists or anything like that. It'll keep all the hot vapor out of that system. So once we've insulated all the ceilings, we're gonna then put this vapor barrier under. Now a lot of you have been wondering, how are you gonna install the cabling? Because you may have seen, especially in a lot of adaptations of buildings, less so new buildings, that you always run the cables through the joists, you cut little holes, and I'll just say now, don't think you should be doing that if it's not necessary. We've chosen the joists at the dimensions we have to create the best possible structure. If you start chiseling holes in these, it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. And it may not be very significant, but if we don't need to do it, let's not do it. Also, the norm in France, which is the regulations that regulate how wiring should be put in, so we get all signed off safe, means that you can't be feeding cabling through joists and insulation. In principle, all the cabling has got to be easily accessible. And I actually found out this week, you know, I like had the laser up and was putting all these little pins in and stuff. Even that is actually against the norms. So we're gonna to have to change that. What we wanna be aiming for is a very small suspended ceiling. So it creates a gap. Within that, we'll run all the cabling and plumbing. And the cabling's got to be loose enough so that if anything occurs, if any changes need to be made, you can pull the cable out with one swift pull without it snagging on anything from the source of the fuse box to where you've wired it. So that means we can't use these pins and get everything nice and tight. It's got to be a little bit loose or in trays so that future proofing, we can pull that cable out and that's the spec of the build. So, which means we can get away with insulating all the ceilings and then anything we need to run will be run just below that. And we shouldn't have to bring it down very much. It's a very tiny little bit, but it means future-wise everything's sorted and it's a lot easier install. We can add and add and add until we're you know, satisfied that we don't need to put anything more on. Then we can put the plasterboard on. So that's kind of how that's going to work. Now we've got a bit of future planning to think, okay, what have we got to run? Obviously there's the basics, there's the lights, and there's the sockets and stuff like that, but anything in the future like uh, Cat5 cabling for fibre and stuff, we need to think about that before we do that final plasterboard install to make sure everything's behind there that needs to be behind there. Even if we're not using it for now, it needs to be there for later. Now, you may have seen me speak about the light switches. 
So all them now are going to be like a radio frequency or a Wi-Fi switch, which means we don't need to run cables down the walls and to the switch, which would look quite ugly. Now one way of doing it, which a lot of people do it in a stone building like this, is you chisel out a little channel and you run the wire in that channel and then you lime it back up and the wire's hidden. And I really didn't want to do that because as we're talking about future proofing, you know, we're hiding a wire in a wall in a, you know, okay, it may roughly go up, but it's going to wind in and out of the stones. And I may know where it goes now, but see 20, 30 years in the future, no one's going to know where that wire is. And the, the risk is someone will puncture it by putting up, you know, something on the wall or a light switch will need to be changed. And then they've got a chisel out the whole wall and create loads of disruption and that's the exact thing we're trying to avoid in this place. We're going to make it as easy as possible to be adapted in future and cause a minimal disruption to the building. So the light switches is a really cool way of doing that. We don't need any wires to them, we just need to wire the lights up there and we can put a wireless switch on. Now the plug sockets are going to be a little bit different. We are going to have to hide the wire, but again, we're not going to chisel it into the wall. We're going to look at a solution, possibly in trunking, uh, which will hide that wire. And yeah, we could get that a bit slicker, but in the terms of not hiding wires and making it easily changeable in the future, I think we can do that really nicely. And it will mean that we haven't got to hide anything in walls, you know, and it's all very straightforward and very easy to see how it's been done. Obviously this will be followed with wiring diagrams that will keep with the chateau so if anything needs to happen in future people can see exactly which route the wires take. So in the basement is going to work a little bit different. We've gone to the effort of having all the walls done which means they're breathable. So that means we're not going to be covering the walls, we're not going to be insulating the walls or plasterboarding them other than the few walls which are you know, a mix between breeze block and brick and they're a bit messy, so them walls will be plastering, but we're not gonna be insulating or covering the walls down here. So it makes the install a little bit more tricky, but I think it's gonna make the basement more usable in future. As soon as you start trying to block up walls or concrete walls or stop damp coming through the walls, it then just stays within the wall and it's not great for the building. The mason has been walking around explaining to me how, you know, previous mistakes have been made and how this lime is going to be so much better for the building's breathability. Upstairs will be completely different. Yes, we're still going to give a coat of lime on the walls just to stabilise everything, keep all that crumbliness from falling off behind the walls, you know, when it gets heated and stuff, we don't want, want them to be super stable. But they're all going to be boarded and insulated. And that's with an effort to kind of reduce the amount of energy it takes to heat the place. Like these buildings always, always end up in ruin because people cannot afford to live in them. They can't afford to heat in them. You often find people consolidated to just one floor or a few rooms because the chateau's too much to heat and maintain. And we don't want that to happen here. So yes, we want to be sympathetic, but we also want to get that insulation in there so the chateau is usable all year. And just to give you an idea of the complete difference that will make, we've had some calculations done. Well, actually, it's been my friend Davy who's done like a rough estimate that the chateau originally without the insulation, as it was kind of back in the day, would have been kind of like 1,200 kilowatts to heat the whole place, which is massive, you know. And even then, it had been leaking out of every single glazed window and the roof and all the little spaces and stuff. It had been terribly inefficient. If we do like we're doing, insulate every floor, insulate the walls, even though the walls won't be huge, but it'll be, you know, a good barrier. If we make all them changes with double glazed windows, we'll take it down to 1,200 to about 30 kilowatts and you can see what a huge difference that will make in terms of having to heat the place you know so all them things are going to be really important in the longevity of the build so it's super important to insulate them it's important to get all these details right make sure everything's nice and snug there's no air gaps make sure we're using the right products we're going to be mainly using the rock wall product because for an old building that's kind of what's recommended. It's not the same as the glass wall product, it's not the same as the plastic insulation like the foam boards. 
it works with the building it'll allow the walls to keep breathing behind all that but it'll be super super good at insulating the place so we actually had the rock wall representatives come here and I didn't mention it because it was super exciting at the time and it's dwindled out to nothing. They came because they saw the videos and they were like, look, this is a product you need to use. And they went through the whole chateau with me. They walked around and they said, what product to use here? What thickness to use here? What our value will gain? And then they were like, you know, we'll actually be able to give you a load of this for free or discount it. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was like, I just will hold off on saying anything yet until it's confirmed. And actually, it's, I don't think that's going to be the case. Maybe they'll help us out a bit. But it was super helpful them walking around and telling us what products will be what and how well the insulation is going to be performing, you know. So we know this is a right product to use for the building. And it's not going to be cheap to get the whole building in this, but we've got to do it once. It will last, you know, probably 50, 60 years before hopefully any real issues, you know. So it's going to be the right product to use and it's going to make the whole building breathable and hopefully warm in the winter and cold in the summer. Now, in terms of wiring, like I said here, obviously we're putting that as a secondary thing. We've got the help of an electrician who is going to be doing a little bit of work here, but more importantly, he's given me advice on how to do everything to the French norm, which is the proper regulations, you know, what wiring to use, how to wire it, how to split the free phase between the whole chateau. So that's anything we're doing electric wise, we're not kind of winging, like we've got someone who's really given us good advice and everything's gonna be proper. Then it's relatively easy to do once you have the step by step things and you've got someone kind of looking over it at the end going, okay, you did it right. I think that's super important. And I'm excited to get all that in, you know, like we can probably start putting lights in here. I would have thought the next few weeks with these wireless switches um, and we can start, you know, getting it together slowly and layering up these different electric systems that we need in here till eventually we can close it up. But just getting like switches and lights and plugs and things working in here. Oh, that's going to be super cool. Like I'm, I'm so excited about it. Like choosing the lights and all that fancy chateau stuff. Not really my thing, but like getting it in here and getting it working. It's going to be a game changer for us lot. So another thing I wanted to touch on is I think a lot of people are concerned that, you know, we're putting the insulation in a little bit too soon and you, you know, you kind of are right. So even though this will resist humidity and it's not going to soak up any water, you know, really the roof needs to be completely finished before normally you'd put the insulation in. We're kind of taking a bit of a risk because what we've done is so reliable, especially in this section of the Chateau. No water has ever come through it. No water is still coming through it. So we're relatively confident that we can do this bit with no drips. And we plan to start slating the roof anyway Probably, I'd say, in the next three or four weeks, we're going to aim to get like this side where we've insulated, all slated. So, yes, we are taking a risk, but we're not taking a risk for a very long time. And we're super confident that this bit is dry. And the risk is worthwhile because it means it allows us to advance on the basement instead of kind of, you know, what we don't want to do is sit around waiting for the break in the weather. And that's what we've been doing with a roof can't start the roof until the weather gets better and things still need to progress inside so we want to be progressing inside but we also want to get the roof done so it's a timing issue but I think this will be absolutely fine and I think if we can get the roof on the other sections either slated and finished or to a point where we're very happy and confident that they're not dripping we'll progress with the whole basement and that will mean that the basement will end up being the first place to be fully finished, you know. And I don't want to do it sooner than we should. You know, I want everything to last. I don't want anything to get ruined. But the more we can progress with the basement, we then get the kitchen in the chateau. We then get, like, the boiler and heating system started to be in here. You know, a lot of things are coming from the basement. So we can't progress above until the basement is pretty much finished. So it'd be nice to get this together it'd be nice to it'd be a good morale boost for everyone to see it coming together as well 
So that's kind of the aim. We've got a lot of other things to do in the meantime, and we'll talk about them in previous weeks. But we're going to get this section finished insulated. We're going to get lights and stuff in here. The mason's going to be finished in the kitchen in the next kind of week. Then he's coming back kind of on the weekends to do the rest of the vault. So there's a little bit of time until this is completely finished. We've got a lot more to do in concrete floors and stuff like that. But it's going to be one of the first areas to really come together. I mean, what an amazing area it's going to be. I don't know exactly what all the rooms are going to be for. I think a lot will be taken up, well, a lot will be taken up by the kitchen, you know. You may realise the kitchen's kind of my thing. And as I spoke about, we want this sort of a bit of a commercial kitchen and a nice kitchen. So that'll actually be two separate kitchens. We'll have the nice proper kitchen with the farmhouse table, the hub of the chateau, which leads straight out into the garden. And then we'll have this kitchen behind, which will be more of a pro kitchen, which will do any mass events that maybe in the future we need to do, but it'll be there, you know, as a, as a thing to use later. So there is just two areas I want to quickly touch on, which haven't been part of this week's video. Hello. Hello. Um, is that, is about the floors and the roof. Now, we're getting a lot of stick naturally saying, oh, you should just be concentrating on the roof. Roof is the priority, and it is, like, definitely the priority. The reason we're waiting on the roof is because it's winter. Now, it's not just about being up there and being freezing cold in the winter. It's about looking for a weather window. Now, to do the roof, to get the slates and the flashing on the roof, what's got to happen is we've got to take everything off of the roof that we've put on. So all the tarps and the membrane that we've put on there to keep it waterproof, we've got to take all that off. We've got to cut, cut holes in the roof for the dormers and we've got to make the dormers. So that means when we start that process, even if we do it section by section, it means we're at a stage where for at least, you know, three or four weeks, the chateau, that part of the chateau we start, isn't waterproof because we've taken everything off and it's vulnerable. So we've got to wait for a break in the weather where it's 100% reliable or as reliable as it can be for a good few weeks so that we can risk taking everything off to then start doing it properly. So that's just what we're waiting for. For that, we can't rush it, we can't take everything off and then it rains for a week solid and ruins everything inside. That can't happen. So we're just waiting for that window and hopefully, like I said, that'll be in the next few weeks. Another thing is all these sub floors. So we're putting the insulation in now from underneath, um, but the floor on top is still temporary. It's a temporary RSB. Now that's not gonna affect it because the insulation is pushed right up to the bottom of that. So when we take that floor up, the insulation will be flush with the floor and we can lay the new OSB. And we're waiting for the new OSB because the new OSB it's tongue and grooved, it's a lot thicker, and it'll make the whole floor a structural element. The OSB, once it's tied together, will mean that each joist supports each other and becomes a lot more solid. And on top of that, we'll be laying a parquet. So, because the parquet needs to adhere to that OSB, it can't be OSB that's been sat there, you know, getting dusty and horrible for kind of a few months. It's got to be pretty much fresh and primed so that when we put the adhesive on to lay the parking, it sticks nicely. So that's why we're in no rush to get the permanent floors in. We don't want them to get ruined too quickly. So by putting the insulation in, it's not gonna affect the flooring we put on top. So that's about it. It's super exciting seeing it come together. The timeline's always gonna be a bit here and there when we're gonna have to risk doing stuff before it's ready just to, you know, get everything in basically there's a lot to do so I hope you enjoy seeing it come together I hope you've enjoyed the more technical details and why we're doing what we're doing everything you know some decisions are made on the fly on the day some things change quite regularly you know and we just do them as we go but stuff like this the insulation the constructing the floors and how we're you know detail in each room have already been really 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 well thought out so yeah, that's a good thing for the chateau, I think. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you bright and early Monday morning for the normal videos. And I'll see you the Sunday after for a technical breakdown.